All right, so we're starting Internal Warfare, the Sean Loeffler podcast number two. We're still doing this informally. Like we said, we got like, fuck, like 10,000 views on the last <laughs> YouTube video. So I know, I know you guys are digging it, but I'm still going to keep it informal until somebody's like, hey, you guys got to get a studio or like a, a card that comes up and all that stuff. So until we have the real demand for that, we're still going to do it informal. So this is the opening right here, real informal, where I'm just going to say who we're wrong with. Quantel Langford, all right? This guy is not only one of the head coaches at the compound, my gym and everything, so we always try to rep that, just heart clothing, and all he's got his fight coming up, the stuff we always do. But more importantly, he is a five-time, five-time Division I competitor from Tennessee. You know what I mean? This guy went and they won a conference championship when he was there. And he has not only interesting stuff about himself and then coaching and owning a clothing company with MMA, He's on the Chamber of Commerce in, in, in Oceanside. He's done a bunch of other stuff. So we're going to pick his brain a little bit about some stuff that I know you folks will find interesting, and he's probably like sweating bullets. Um, so, Quantel, how are you doing? Doing well. I'm doing well. Better than I deserve. <laughs> that, that's good news. Through the, ho- through the holidays, that, that's, that's good. So, um, quick little, um, just up to date, we'll, we'll get started with, with our question for, um, for you just to start right off the bat. First of all, when you were in high school, when did you know you wanted to go to Tennessee and wrestle? Um, I, good question. I mean, I, I, I really didn't know until maybe my, my, maybe my junior, senior year. Um, you know, it, it's one of those where uh, I did have uh, different, different offers uh, from various places. Uh, you know, I was very fortunate, very blessed that, uh, you know, my, I had great grades. Was that a full ride scholarship? Uh, yeah, yeah. And, wow, so uh, it was a full ride. Yeah, so awesome. uh, not even including um, the other uh, scholarships I had um, what outside the, of that. What were those other scholarships um, that you had? Well, I was, uh, you know, I was part of a, um, uh, the 100 Black Man organization there. Uh, plus, I was uh, part of the Boys and Girls Club. Okay, so this is and, what I want to, I'm so glad you got right into that. <laughs> this is what I want to talk, talk about when it comes to sports right now and a little bit of an interesting topic that I think people, not sports just right now, sports in general, yeah. is that people like, especially African American guy that was on a scholarship. Now, do you think it's harder for a white guy to get a scholarship in sports than a black guy in college? Um, honestly, I. I really don't think it is. You don't think it is? Uh, no. Then uh, why did you mention the 100 black man um, thing that you put on the things that qualified you for more money? Yeah, well, I, I, I think well, and I think with them, too, I think they're starting to change the culture of how they view themselves. Because I'm just being interested. Uh, you know yeah. what I mean? Is there, the, is there a, uh, and I'm not being so guy, is there the 100 white guy scholarship that somebody could have gotten? Yeah, no. Well, you know, someone should make a... See what I'm saying? <laughs> should make an organization <laughs> for that. But no, I, I think I think that's been, uh, even with the organization, I think that's been, the, um, um, you know, something that a lot of people sort of talked about to where, you know, why do we only focus towards, you know, the you know African American, yeah, yeah. American. Uh, so now they're starting to spread it out now. So especially, now, honestly, especially they, when if we want to go with stereotypes, yeah. you guys have a pretty athletic advantage over most people based on stereotypes <laughs> and numbers of scholarships. If you look at the number of of, of football and in now wrestling, even yeah. shoot wrestling, and and, and and then you look at basketball, obviously yeah. like that. So it's stuff like that that's interesting because I think and what I'm getting my big round point to that I think people will appreciate and like. I know a lot of people are like this is awesome is. Um, it's almost one area of life where it's almost counterculture reverse racism against the people that aren't an African American or even an ethnic person that are athletic. Yeah. Which is super interesting to me because, which I think is totally deserved. I think the best people should get it. But yeah. the funniest thing is too, is that um, every area of life is not like that. Yeah. Like there's for sure such a thing as white privilege. Yeah. For sure such a thing as that, you yeah. know? Um, I have, as we know, and then I, and I'm, and I'm going to pick your brain about some. I have, you know, a, a, a pink Cadillac, and I drove to Vegas to get a kid on the Ultimate Fighter, Jose yeah. Martinez, that'll probably win the show from Cleveland. So, guy that you know, I manage and coach. So, I'm driving to Vegas, and we are going haul and ask because there's a fires here, yeah. and I'm just like, let's get out of here, let's get to Vegas, get this kid winning, and um, I get pulled over by a cop, mm-hmm. right? Straight the fuck up, Quantel. <laughs> I could tell. My windows are up, tinted windows. You guys would see, eventually see pictures or whatever. It's a ridiculous <laughs> car. But I could tell these two cops, these highway patrol guys, were thinking, like, these are two gang members going to fucking Vegas. Yeah. Straight the fuck up. Like, two African-American black gang members. It's a fucking pink Cadillac with furry <laughs> everything but tinted windows. I rolled down the window. He was like, oh, kind of tripping. He's like, what's this all about? And I was like, hey, if you look at the stickers, I'm in MMA gym. Yeah. And he just let us go. 
and I looked and I and, and I said and I said uh, Amanda was in the car with me. I said to Amanda, I was like, I was like, I'm talking about this shit on my podcast. <laughs> There's no way. If it was just even even if it was you as a that a black dude in the a pink Cadillac, somebody stole my stickers, yeah. they would have just been like this. They were just like, oh, surprise, and moved on. Yeah. And then we go to the tryout, and you look at the athleticism different, and you're like, well. They get it on the flip side. I'll tell you that much right now because there's 80% African Americans, Mexicans, yeah. Puerto Ricans, and I'm not saying like just black people. I'm saying like any race yeah. over, over the white guys there. And it started just giving me this different like kind of viewpoint on things where I'm like, wow, it's really the only way that it like works out in, in somebody's favor being African American going to college. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Because anything else you guys get the blood end of the sick. Yeah, and, I, and, and honestly, I, I think that it really depends on where you come from. Uh, I mean, I've, you Tennessee, know... Tennessee, that'd be interesting. Uh, I've, I've had people to where, uh, you know, they felt like, you know, there's certain limitations and things on that. Like I said, and, I, and I've been fortunate enough to where um, I, I really, you know, yeah, obviously, I, I think there's in certain situations there's been some, certain, uh, you know, limitations as far as uh, in certain, certain circumstances through my life. But I, I really don't, you know, I honestly, personally for me, I really don't, see that as as far as like me being out you know going able to you know being able to run my own business and and you know network and try to connect with new people um i really don't see race for me as a as a um as a limitation i, I think that's something that might be more um uh, uh mental uh and something that we've been learned in culture uh through you know through society through media to where you know because of my skin color i don't get certain situations and i have to do certain things because of that you know who's really teaching you that? Uh, it, you know, is that something media, we're getting? Yeah. yeah, is that something we're getting from the media? Is that something we're getting from our parents, or are your parents saying, "Hey, you know, you can do, you know, whatever, you know, you can, uh, you know, or, as long as you work for it." Or, and sorry to interrupt, like the, you're hearing kids in the background, the compound kids class going on. So obviously it's family gym, so you don't mind that there. But um, or the other thing is, like you said, is it learned? Is it through the media? Is it yeah. your parents? Or, unfortunately, and the fucked up thing is that sometimes it's through life experience. Yes. Like yep. a fucking black dude gets fucked with by a police officer for no fucking reason. Yeah. And he, and I would understand, I mean, I'm covered in tattoos. I, I get tr treated like I'm a minority just because of what I look like, having tattoos on, having my lifestyle, didn't graduate high school, yeah. you know, stuff like that. You know, fought for a living, fight in a cage, half naked man, you yeah. know? So I, I, so I see where I would fucking hate, like on certain points, like at some white cop, if three different years in a row at some event, and, and I'm and sure you know more than me from Tennessee, I have so many of my fighters here that tell me like, oh yeah, anytime I go to San Diego, but like they'll fuck with us. And I'm like, yeah, so I understand it. Yeah. But you know, like I'm not saying it's appropriate or whatnot. And just a little side note, when people hear this and they go, oh yeah, well, Quantel's on the, the Chamber of Commerce and he owns a, a, a successful fight clothing company and he works at the compound and, and, and all that. And he's, of course, he's trying to be politically correct and say, like, he doesn't see race. Here's the little asterisk. He's married to a white chick. So I don't think when he says that he doesn't care about race, that it's disingenuous at all. Just for other people, because you know how comments are, or likes yeah. and dislikes, how people go off on that shit. Yeah. And they can be like, of course he's gonna say that. There's some fucking kid from Tennessee, there's a mountains, you know? Um, and so anybody that knows Quantel, not only is an amazing guy, uh, but he obviously is colorblind of that type of thing. Now, a another thing that I wanted to get into um, was growing up, and this is the last really thing that I want to talk about uh, that has anything ro racially motivated is you were raised by two black parents. Yes. Actually, one. But. Okay, one black parent. <laughs> now, after talking to your wife or having uh, social interactions with people, yeah. you grew up in Tennessee. Yeah. What is the discipline difference between having a black parent and a white parent, in your opinion? Because uh, now, now you're married to one, so yeah, she's going to um, be an influence. It's, it's definitely a different, I, I mean, I felt like it was a, you know, really a different dynamic. Uh, you know, there's, uh, obviously, you know, there's, you know, certain ways that, you know, parents in the South uh, sort of discipline their, their children, but, I mean, I was always, uh, you know, it was one. My dad was an LAPD cop. Yeah. He'd beat my ass. Yeah, you know, he, he, yeah I had up, to get disciplined. Yeah. I was me. Yeah, growing up, I mean, I, I've gotten you know, hit me. with a switch, a brush, <laughs> uh, just yeah, any, yeah. tell me, hey, go, yeah. go to the tree, go pick out, you know, the, you know, the, uh, a switch. Yeah. No, I and, and, and anybody switch. that goes like, oh my God, your, your dad hit you or did this or did yeah. that. I go, listen to me now. Imagine what it would have been like if he didn't do that shit. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and I, I, and I think that was, like I said, that was the way that um, they, they disciplined us. I mean, it was something where, you know, my mom did that, my grand, uh, my grandparents did that. And like I said, and I, I think that, that helped me sort of mold the, the person I am. And I have, like I said, I have all the respect for, uh, for my elders, for my, you know, for my parents. 
And uh, so it's one, and like I said, and it's, it's a, on the flip side, it can be something to where, you know, they don't want exactly. something. They like a parent can come in and say, hey, look, I, I don't want you to, to go through what you know I went through. So, but ironically, it ends up becoming reverse because now they're getting away with too much stuff, and now and you get to a certain age. Sometimes it's too late. Sometimes you know you get to a point to where you know you've got them as a parent. Then you get to a point you get, they get in middle school to high school. You're just a you're a mentor. You're not even a parent anymore. You're there to hey look guide them and allow, let them do the best they can. But like I said, I think if you've had that, you know, you built those uh, those inner foundations when they're younger. I think even if you know good or bad, whatever experiences happen to them, I think they can still fall back to that foundation. No, I I completely agree. Now, uh, give a real quick shout out, just because we're wrapping up. Now, you obviously are very intellectual. You're very motivating. You, you I, I personally know you do motivating speaking. Not everybody else does. How can we get a hold of you on on social media? What's the easiest okay. way? Uh, easiest way is uh, you can get a hold of me on uh, Facebook uh, at Quantel Langford, uh, or you can hit me up on Instagram uh, at Quantel Langford, and uh, yeah, send me a shoot me a message. Uh, you know, if you got you know an issue or you got uh, you know something you want to talk about, hey, I, I'm I'm always checking. Um, I'll send you a message. Um, and so. just hard clothing. Check it out. Until next time, we said we got a short show. Appreciate. <laughs>